What's going on guys, Cockmine here, and a while ago the third trailer for Game of Thrones Season 6 was released. Technically it's the second trailer, and that the March Madness teaser doesn't count, but I'm going to make it count just because. Now let me get a couple of things out of the way before we start the video. In the previous breakdown, I missed a couple of images that you guys were able to catch and accurately point out. I make mistakes, it happens, and any YouTuber worth your time can admit that and correct them, which I will do now. I also want to go on record as saying these HBO trailers really suck when it comes to the resolution, and the lighting isn't that great, and I hope this isn't a recurring thing in the future. But to the things I've missed, which you guys have pointed out, here's the first one. Which is a shadow of a man being stabbed in the back, and it's almost definitely Jaime stabbing the Mad King. You can see here the top of the stabby's head is kind of weird, almost like he's wearing something maybe a crown, and also you can kind of make out the Iron Throne here. And you can see the decorative blue door of the throne room, which is something we've seen before, most notably in Season 1, Episode 3, when Ned walks into the room and talks to Jamie. You can see that they have painted their doors blue before Joffrey's renovation in Season 2. The second thing I might have missed is the Night's King and his horsemen, and it looks like he has a special horn on his back that allows him to bring down the wall when blown. This is a video topic for another time, but just know it's an important item, and in the books, it's mentioned a couple of times. At one point, Tormund bluffs that the Wadlings have it, but in reality, they never found it. Once again, if you guys believe I missed some more things, feel free to leave it down below, but, to, but those are the two main ones I missed. Now with that out of the way, let's get on to it. First question, do you think Jon will be resurrected by Bloodraven instead of Melisandre? This is something I've been hearing for a while now, and it's coming out of the Season 6 premiere. Someone who went to the premiere went online and started discussing it, and this is one of the things many people have noticed about the episode. That, supposedly, Bloodraven, which is the person Bran is training with, will resurrect Jon in the very first episode. I could be wrong here, but I think it'd be weird to have Jon Snow come back in the very start of the season. If they really wanted to fake us out, they would wait a bit until they, you know, reach the middle and then bring him out of nowhere. I mean, if they really wanted to tease us, they could just have some snow zombies try to eat him, and then they could just roll him under a, a dumpster or something. Five points if you get that reference. Second question, what do you think will be the most surprising death of the season, and will the dragon horn make an appearance? My favorite character is Peter Baelish, and if he dies, then I would be incredibly surprised, shocked, and very pissed off. I love Baelish, and I think he plays the game beautifully. I would also think Sansa or Tyrion's death would be very surprising. I mean, we all know Tyrion won't die, but it's always in the back of our minds, and they love having the character dance around death. In a recent interview, uh, the actress who plays Sansa was quoted as saying that if her character were to die, she wants to have an amazing death scene. So, to me, the most shocking would be Tyrion, Sansa, and, ba and Peter Baelish. Tyrion likely won't happen because he is one of the main characters of the show, the others being Arya, Danny, Bran, and Jon Snow. As for the Dragonhorn, I really hope so. For those of you who don't know, the Dragonhorn is an ancient device that allows the person who owns it to effectively control dragons, or so they say. I won't go into any more detail than that, but... If they want to make Euron an even bigger threat than Roose Bolton or Peter Baelish, then I think it would be a smart choice to bring in the Dragonhorn. Third question, what will happen to Theon and does he have any role left to play or any significance to the story? Look, I'm not going to be comparing the two, but I'm just saying that he's kind of like Han Solo in Episode 7. I mean, is there anything left they can do with Theon's character? He's already redeemed himself by getting Sansa out of that situation, and I really don't see the character having any more to do than die. I know that's harsh, but in the books, Stannis is still alive and he's captured Theon. He plans to execute him to rally the other northern lords to his side because of the whole killing Bran and Rickon thing. We were told that towards the big battle in the north that the Boltons will be burning a well-known character on that cross, and that very well could be Theon. Personally, I don't see him having any more important things to do, but according to the actor who plays Theon, he'll start growing a backbone this season and owning up to a lot of his previous mistakes. But like I said, I doubt Theon has anything left of value to present to us, and there really isn't anywhere the character can go in terms of progression or story. If you disagree, leave your thoughts below. Fourth question, do you think Sansa will have an abortion this season? Well, Ramsay is an asshole and he probably didn't pull out when he fucked her, which is a douche move. She won't have an actual abortion while a doctor comes in and all that, but in that world, when women have unwanted pregnancies, they drink this thing called moon tea and it basically forces you to lose the child. Lysa Tully was forced to drink that when she was younger because she slept with Peter and her father didn't want her to have that child. You could also say that that's why she was so crazy and so obsessed with keeping her child safe. Being forced to give up the child to the one you love can fuck you up mentally, but her father did it because Peter isn't a highborn lord. 
Next question, what's your death predictions for this season? You can rule out Jorah Mormont. His death will be in the very last season, probably within the first couple of episodes, so it won't happen this season. The people I'm expecting to die are Theon, Tommen, the High Sparrow, Wunwun, and most of the traitors at Castle Black. The person who was at the premiere said that in the first episode, the Wadlings come back to Castle Black and kill most of the brothers there who betrayed Jon. Ollie is, I think, killed off screen, and Tormund kills Dorne. Theon, well, see my previous answer. Tommen, because he is necessary for Cersei to go insane, and I'm expecting that to happen. The High Sparrow, because Cersei wants revenge, and I can definitely see him going down. And as a result, maybe a small civil war inside King's Landing because of it. And one one probably towards the end in the big battle in the north, mainly because I'm sure the showrunners don't want to keep having him around due to how expensive the CGI is. Next question, do you think Tyrion will take Quentin's place and burn in Dragonfire? And if so, could he be a Targaryen and not burn? Yeah, I don't think they'll kill off Tyrion this season. Like I said, he is a main character and they love having him dance around death. I don't think he'll take Quentin's place and die by Dragonfire, but maybe somebody else will? As for him being a Targaryen, it's still a possibility, but not all Targaryens are immune to fire. I used to think that, but according to George R. R. Martin, what happened to Danny is a very rare and special case that involves magic and whatnot. So if Tyrion is a Targaryen, he'll probably still burn. Next question, do you think Howland Reed will make an appearance this season? I hope so. For those of you who don't know, Howland Reed is an important figure in the North and is a strong ally and supporter of the Starks. He was with Ned during the Tower of Joy incident and is probably one of the few people who are aware of Jon's through parentage. His appearance in the show may reveal it, but I believe Jon's parentage will be revealed through flashbacks. It won't they won't outright tell you that it's this person and this person, but you'll have to, you know, make the connections yourself, and I actually like that. I would like for Howland Reed to come in and help out in the battle against the Boltons, but I highly doubt he'll ever show up in the show, but I'm confident he'll appear in the books at some point. Next question, do you see a point of having the phrase if they are excluding Lady Stoneheart? Yes and no. For the longest time, I thought Sansa would be the new Stoneheart, and while that is still possible, I have no fucking clue what they're doing by bringing back Walder Frey, but I'm still excited for it. I like that the show brings back these characters every so often to remind us that they're still alive, and it makes the world a bit bigger to have them around. I have no fucking idea why they would bring Brienne back to the Riverlands. Maybe she's on a mission from Sansa to bring Blackfish Tully to the cause. Alfie Allen, who plays Theon, spoiled something that happens in the first episode, and don't worry, this isn't a major spoiler, so you're okay. But according to him, as they're running away from Winterfell, he and Sansa split up and he's trying to draw the Bolton soldiers away and Brienne eventually catches up with him and starts kicking ass. I would love if Brienne's new mission is to kill Walder Frey, but I doubt they'll do that and save him for Arya to finish off in the last season. I can see it now, too. Arya comes in from behind, stabs Walder Frey in the neck and whispers in his ear, You should have stayed at Hogwarts, you motherfucker. Ah, <sighs> I can dream, can't I? I can dream. Next question, do you think we'll get more mythical creatures this season? I really do hope so. The books mention several creatures that exist in the world, like krakens and basilisks and unicorns, which is basically a giant hairy goat with one horn. The one thing I am dreading are the ice spiders that the White Walkers have, mainly because I'm a bitch and I hate spiders. Seriously, that's not a joke. I really hate bugs in general, and I don't want to see large spiders. But yeah, other than dragons, I would love to see more monsters and creatures this season. Do I think we will? Probably not. They spent a majority of that budget on Peter Dinklage, Lena Headey, Amelia Clark, and the Dragons, so I don't think so. And last question, when do you think the White Walkers will invade? I really hope towards the end of Season 7, and the reason I say this is because, as cool of an enemy that they are, I really want to get a lot of things out of the way first before we venture into the final battle. Supposedly HBO is trying to get two more Season of Thrones before they end it, and I hope they save the Walkers for last because there are a lot of things that need to happen before we get to that point. The one thing about the Walkers that I liked is that in the first couple of seasons, they never really showed them. The Walkers are a threat in the back of our minds. With all the stuff going on in Westeros and Essos, you're, you're preoccupied with the ongoing civil war and, and Danny's struggles in the East that you almost forget the Walkers are still out there. Hopefully they keep their appearance as minimal as possible to keep that feel of coming dread. You know, because while we're excited to see Jon Snow fight Ramsay one-on-one, -on -one, you want to be focused on that intense battle and not just having the walkers on your mind the entire time. Showing less is actually showing more, and I've always been a big believer in that. Except when it comes to these episodes. We really should have gotten 12 a season, but whatever. 
But thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more in the future. If I wasn't able to answer any of your questions in this video, then leave it down below and I'll try to get to it. And if you're wondering what my next Game of Thrones history video will be on, I left a little hint on my Twitter page. It's a rough sketch, but it's something my buddy George is working on for me, and I love his artwork. Check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. Once again, thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.